This is an On Track Studios production. body care and I'm so excited to have you on the channel once more today I have with me a very special lady she's Jamaican what do I mean by that her anxious ancestry is that her parents are from Jamaica which was born in New York but the difference is that she identifies strongly with Jamaica comes home often she was just a customer but no, she has become my friend and in a way also like a mentor too. But I'm going to let her tell you more about who she is. Hi, Kemoy. How are you? Hi. I am so happy to see you again. Me too. Me too. So tell us, who are you? So, like you said, I'm Kemoy Duhaney. I was born to Jamaican parents. Um, my mom, fun fact, had me like two and a half weeks after she landed <laughs> in New York. So I was almost born here. And as a child, I was always very fascinated with the fact that I was almost born here. Mm -hmm. And I always, one of my biggest childhood dreams was actually to come to the island to meet my family, to learn my, more about the people, the culture. Because even though I live in the U.S., I felt like this was one of the, like, this is part of my history and I wanted to learn more about it. Um, I never traveled to the island up until my 20s. It was my first time being on a plane, so I made sure the first time I ever <laughs> got on a plane, it was to come to Jamaica, never been before, so it was very, like, a new experience. Um, I ended up going to college. I went to the Fashion Institute of Technology, mm -hmm. where I studied fashion merchandise and management and also cosmetics and fragrance marketing. Um, something that I discovered that I really was passionate about while I was working at Bath & Body Works, which is where I fell in love with beauty. Mm -hmm. fragrance, cosmetics, you name it. Um, from there, I worked at several different re major retailers because I focus on the retail end. But as I'm progressing throughout my career, I came to, I don't want to say a roadblock, but I came to a point where I'm just like, okay, so I live in America. I have access to all these different brands. Mm -hmm. Why is it that I don't see any brands in, from Jamaica or... Right, don't go there then. Don't go there. So you <laughs> mentioned Bath and Body Works. Yes. But you have to tell us some of the other known brands that you've also worked with. That I work for? Mm -hmm. um, so I work for Bath and Body Works. I worked at Sephora, managing mm -hmm. color, skin care, um, makeup, visual merchandising, you name it, hiring, development leadership, all mm -hmm. of those things. Um, then after Sephora, I worked at Macy's where I managed fragrance counters for all the major fragrance brands. Um, pretty much that's in the U.S. I had the top account for the company that I worked for. Mm -hmm. So that was like an amazing experience. Um, and also building leadership talent and also really focusing on customer service and embracing different cultures because the store that I worked at was very much a melting pot where you interacted with a lot of different cultures, right. which also inspired my love to so, so tell me, give me an idea of when a woman walks into Zephora or Macy's Fragrance area, what, what are they really looking for? When they are walking into one of those stores, they are focused on finding 
something that's gonna make them happy. Mm -hmm. They want to find something that's gonna make them happy. They want to also find a solution. They might have been inspired by something they saw online or social media, and they want to achieve that look or achieve that feeling, that essence that they see in a, maybe a magazine or something online. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty much what they're looking for mm -hmm. when they go to the store. Yeah, so come on, women all over the world, no matter the shade of the skin color, no matter the hair texture, everybody wants to be beautiful. So I just want to, I mean, you're the closest thing to the industry expert, man. So when somebody walks up to you in the store and they say, how can you make me beautiful? What are some of the things that you say to them? What do you look at? Give me an idea of what happens. So I engage with them and I try to find more about their lifestyle, mm -hmm. uh, what they like, what they don't like. Um, Cause beautiful is not defined as one word. Like beautiful is different for different people. Mm -hmm. So really finding and really asking them open-ended questions to really get more information about their lifestyle, like I said, and what they like, and also things of things they want to learn. Mm -hmm. Cause it's not all about just being stuck in your comfort zone. A lot of times when women come into these stores that I've worked in, they want to learn something new. So uh -huh. they want to leave with the product. Mm -hmm. They want to leave with a great experience, but you also want them to leave learning something new. So we always, as women, want to learn something about how we can be our truest self, our beautiful self. Yes. I am intrigued by your own sense of style. I mean, I look at your beautiful complexion, your hair is all nice and perfect and that nice neck piece and, ooh, your jewelry and everything. Where did you get your sense of fashion from? Uh, wow. <laughs> um... Initially, when I attended FIT, which I mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. I initially, because I, I fell in love with retail and I realized I wanted to do something retail related. And being that my parents are from the island, it's like, we came to America, you have to go to college because I didn't know what I wanted to study. But I knew I had to get a degree. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. um, I actually started when I said I started off in fashion merchandise management because I thought I wanted to own my own boutique. Oh. So I think that's when my love for fashion mm -hmm. came in because mm -hmm. I've always, you know, I lived in New York, so fashion is very important. Right. Um, but then after doing a program, I realized mm, I don't really want to deal with clothes mm -hmm. <laughs> per se. Um, so then that's when I was working at Bath and Body Works and it didn't even click to me like, oh. I remember six months ago when I was going to visit New York. My mentor from London said, listen, New York is the fashion mecca, right? Um, you've worked with the big brands, but what then is you tell us about your fascination with Jamaica and Jamaican products, because that's how I met you. Yes. So I want to say about about a year ago, mm -hmm. in November, we met in July, but I fought, first found your brand in January of this year. Yeah. Uh, I discovered um, about three years ago when I started traveling back to the island more frequently, um, I actually knew the entire island. Mm. I was like, oh, this is something. <laughs> I can use this. Because um, previous to that, I was only because I didn't have someone who knew the whole island. So I'm in the beauty industry. Um, I was working at... Um, a particular retailer that I knew wasn't going to be long term mm -hmm. and I wanted to start thinking of different ideas on how I could expand my knowledge or just do something different because I felt like I want to stay in retail but I knew I have to like build things mm -hmm. and not just do what everyone else is doing in New York because it's super competitive so I was like I have to look outside the box so I've always been like I said passionate about learning what be better way than to learn through beauty right because that was the industry that I mm -hmm. and it would be a perfect way for me to learn about the country. So I wouldn't just be like haphazardly around the country. So I focused on, I was like, so my next trip, which was in January of this year, I was like, I'm going to focus on finding Jamaican beauty brands. So that could help me as my friend is like, wow, mm -hmm. look in. So that's kind of how it all just started. I just said, let me make something that I know about. Right. And then really find, because has so much natural resources mm -hmm. and there's so many amazing things you could do with those natural resources so if people abroad are taking advantage of it so I wanted to learn more about like what women businesses here women and male but mm -hmm. specifically women what are they doing to get a piece of the pie in the industry right. and I also wanted to convert as well because I was uh, coming across that a lot of the products I was used to using that I was fine with mm -hmm. and I have like access to the best of the best wasn't working for me anymore. So then I was just like, okay, 
I need to come up with another movie. So that's also how it came up. And I was like, well, my parents are from Jamaica. The source has to be here. Like, right. I'm looking in New York for all my answers. Mm -hmm. And something, I just felt this feeling or this calling that I was going to find whatever I'm looking for, I was going to find it here. Mm -hmm. um, I discovered your brand because I, I love bar soaps. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> kind of literally that trip I left with an old yeah. suitcase full of soaps and then I just was going to different places so pretty much the main thing I found that I liked the most was bar soap that was mm -hmm. the best like quality so I was just going to different places. I did also find a hair care brand but for some reason I really love bar soaps and in New York at the retailers I've discussed with you, the, the places I normally was getting soap from, I didn't like the soaps Right, anymore. right. So, so I have to ha ha get a little plug now. <laughs> so which soaps from Tanya's Body Care have you used? And, you know, tell us, give us a little review. So, like I said, when I came for that trip, the soap was, it, it was everything that I was looking for and more. So I have tried different brands from all over the world and when I found your soap and I used it, I was, it, it was everything. It's, yeah. it's hydrating, it's moisturizing, it clean, like whatever ingredients you say is in it, you, it, it's, it's in it and in it's it. active. Yeah. And I was just like, oh my God, I was so impressed with the quality. And I was like, this is made in Jamaica. Like even when I was taking it to my family members, they were in shock. It was like, somebody made this here on the island. Like from Jamaica, I'm like, yes. Like yeah. so, so amazing. So. I tried the charcoal, mm -hmm. turmeric, my new favorite lemongrass for when I come here. <laughs> um, all seasoning right, during right. our last yeah. meeting and mm -hmm. didn't leave with the body lotion. Like, you won't be leaving with the soaps today. Um, lemongrass lotion. Oh, the underarm cream. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. as a result of trying your underarm cream mm -hmm. since July when we met up. I bought it before, but... When I came in July, like since July, I haven't used it. Was and, and I have to say that we treat what we make like food. You know, yes. it, it, you should see me. I'm very antsy about making sure. And I can tell. Yeah, it's I food for your skin, right? <laughs> yeah, I can tell. <laughs> but you have this fascination um, with Jamaican products, not just Tanya's body yes. care. You have found other products. Yes. And I know that since you've left Jamaica, you have kept in touch with different brands because you're happy about what you're getting. Yes. How do you, so three years ago you came for the first time, now you're back um, some, at least twice per year. What are your thoughts now on, on Jamaica as a whole? As a whole, a destination that you, know, you can get your soaps, you can take them to New York, they're doing amazing work for you. How do you feel about Jamaica? I feel Jamaica has a lot of opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, I my my I haven't solidified my vision, but I'm enjoying the journey that I've been like like you said, like meeting people, talking to people, and things like that. What I feel the impact that I would want to make is that everyone in Jamaica will have the opportunity. Well, I want to be made on the island because a lot of times when I'm shopping around in different stores you don't really see a lot of made in Jamaica. Certain brands like Fontana is very big right. on having labels made in Jamaica, but mm -hmm. I feel like everywhere where uh, the Jamaican Jamaican uh, shop, there should be a section in each store that says mm -hmm. made in Jamaica. There should be a pride about that. You, you know, I'm, I'm shifting a little bit because I almost see you now in a different way. I see you like a brand in itself. Like I could call you for beauty advice. How have your own knowledge of the industry changed since you interacted not only with New York and other parts of the U.S., but now including this Jamaican experience? Wait. So the question yeah. I'm mm -hmm. asking you is, how have you changed? So my perspective of you has changed. I mean, from a customer to a friend, you and I I have actually had long conversations. Um, I'd like to say I'm, I've been learning from you about the beauty industry and you know how to look at Tina's body care and so on. So I wanted to ask you, have you seen any shifts in you? Because I see you like a brand, like have your, it, you know, your New York experience, your training, and now you're interacting with more than one Jamaican brand. Has that it 
has impacted me in the sense that I feel like I'm following my purpose. Mm -hmm. I haven't fully found the answer yet, but I feel like every every step that I'm taking, it feels right. And it feels like something I know I always wanted to do as a kid, and I'm now fulfilling that. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense? It, it does. Um, Because I know, like... When I feel really good when I'm telling people, yes, I'm American, I have Jamaican parents, I like a lot of Jamaican things, of food, culture, but when I'm able to tell someone they see something that I have or they ask me, oh, so what are you using on your skin or what are you using in your hair, and then I'm able to tell them it's a brand from Jamaica, it makes me feel really good. Yeah, yeah. And it provides a teaching moment to show that oh, Jamaica's not just about the beach and the sun mm -hmm. and going on to a resort. I'm like, no, you can actually have products. Even to even with my own immediate family who lives on the island, they're in shock that I'm even buying right. Jamaican products. They're like, but you live in New York. That, um, where you shared with me, because you go to beauty shows in New York and other places and you follow up with the brands because you're staying in the north. In the yes. north. And you told me that you normally go to these shows and buy a lot of products, a lot of soaps. The last one you went to a couple of months ago yeah. with your friends, everybody was like shocked. Do you want to tell us that story? And they were in shock that you were buying a lot of stuff. Yeah, so I went to a, a beauty show. It was a good show. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of people who had a lot of different products. And I didn't leave with any bar soaps, no lotion. Like, it was really, I actually focus on something that we discussed as well, like ingestibles becoming mm -hmm. something um, more popular. So I actually left that show with a lot of different ingestible items, like that um, that also helped with overall outer and inner beauty. Mm -hmm. But I literally was like, no, I just came back from Jamaica, I'm good. Like, I have, I have, I have all the stuff that I got from Jamaica. I was like, I don't really need to buy any more, and it felt really good. Mm -hmm. And they were like, whoa, I need to know about these. So, so, I, so I have cousins who now like live different places, and they're like, wait, I need to know where you're getting this from. My mom is like, oh, so did you bring back some souls? Mm -hmm. I heard you with, meet with Tanya. Like, so now it's kind of like creating an interest, and this is something more I want to see. I want to be able to go in to... Uh, to see more beauty products from Jamaica mm -hmm. in New York. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to see uh, more Jamaican-owned products in different pharmacies on the island. I want I want it to be a, a, something where people feel like they have access to it mm -hmm. and they take pride in, in it as well. Because I feel like a lot of Jamaicans here, they always want something from New York. So you mm -hmm. feel like now it's like, oh, I'm giving you something that's from here. It's yeah. kind of like, oh, but that's not from me. Yeah. It's not about yeah. that. So being be having a, a stronger pride, mm -hmm. and so so my cousins can see that I, I live abroad, but I take pride in that I'm using every day. Mm -hmm. Even when I'm in New York, I'm using something from Jamaica. So yeah. when I'm eating it, it's soap, it's in my hair. Like I feel like I have that daily connection, and I want to be that inspiration so other Jamaicans can join in and do the same thing, especially from a perspective of anyone who gets to leave the island mm -hmm. to reinvest and come back and create better opportunities. I hear you saying that there's a whole world of opportunities in New York for Jamaican entrepreneurs like myself. Yes. Because, I mean, yeah, that, that and the, the amount of Jamaicans alone, apart from other Caribbean people that live in New York and other parts, it's, it's phenomenal. Yeah. We could earn some good cash. Yes, <laughs> because a lot of what's going on right now with social media, mm -hmm. there's benefits and there's some scary things about yeah. social media. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, I was able to find you via social media, right. so that was really good. But when it comes to beauty products, and especially now that skincare is having this moment, because before it was all makeup, makeup, makeup. Mm -hmm. But we're now with the emergence of self-care being a priority, so now skincare is kind of taken back into the fold. And I feel like a lot of people are now creating beauty brands because mm -hmm. there's a low barrier of entry, right. especially in the U.S. with mm -hmm. regulations, that anyone can just come up with a beauty product and say, oh, it does this. Mm -hmm. Oh, it has castor oil. This is going to do this. So it's kind of like because now anyone can just sell it, you can just go on social media and start. Right. So now it's right. kind of hard mm -hmm. for people, to, for regular people who don't really understand the industry to know what's good and mm -hmm. what's not. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of where I kind of came in because I'm like, yeah, we got a Like, lot I go to trade shows mm -hmm. and I'm like, okay, no. Yeah. So it's kind of like when I see great brands here, like people who really invested, mm -hmm. such as yourself, into your product, that's why I, I was like, I have to meet you. Yeah. Like, I was like, 
I don't know how it's gonna work. I am happy. But I'm, I'm like, happy. I've never actually <laughs> tried a product where I felt like I wanted to meet the creator. Yeah. And when yeah. you work with when you have big brands, you're not you don't have that opportunity. But definitely like these products have a market in New York, mm -hmm. and, and because what's, when someone speaks to you, you instantly know that like, you've done your research. Right. You tried the product. You're mm -hmm. not just selling any no, product. No, we you're use not. everything. But you know, I want to shift because again, you're an industry expert, mm -hmm. and like I said, you have a, you have an amazing glow. Tell us about your personal beauty care regime. What do you do to keep your skin gorgeous? So, <laughs> my skin is in transition. <laughs> so, all of late I've been trying different things. Mm -hmm. um, uh, right now, brand-wise, I'm using specifically a lot of independent brands. Because, like I said, I was using big brands and, like, literally, like, they would work. And then, mm -hmm. all of a sudden, it just wasn't working for my skin anymore. Right. So, I'm very big into indie beauty. That's also another reason mm -hmm. that led me to this discovery. Because I feel like independent beauty is where it's at. Um, I love Earth Elements. Mm -hmm. Love, love, love. My favorite place <laughs> too. I walk in and take a whiff. <laughs> so uh, I'm definitely using like different things I've seen there, like their turmeric mask. I love. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm using a lot of things from Atenio, mm -hmm. which good brand, line, amazing. Yeah. So right now, like even when I landed here, I didn't even bring like a full cleanse. I bought like a little bit of a cleanse. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, when I come here, I'm gonna literally. I came and I bought. The spray for my hair. I bought a cleanser. Right. So literally, so those are the main things I'm using at the moment. Mm -hmm. I do have another uh, brand uh, called Folk Beauty, which is based in New York. Mm -hmm. That they have a hemp oil that I use at night. But pretty much, it's it's stuff from Earth Elements. It's a ten year old, and then it's like a like that one oil because pretty much everything I'm using on my face, like I said, mm -hmm. at the moment is mainly from hair. So let me ask you a question about this new, well, it's not a new phenomenon, but you know, bleaching is a big thing. I've watched the documentaries coming out of Africa, even European women who we think are the model of beauty, they too bleach their skin to get a paler shade or whatever. And then when you heard about the recent thing with Spice, right? So. Tell me, tell me, have you ever bleached? Have you ever thought about no, it? Why wouldn't no, you do it? No, no, <laughs> no, no. Um, <sighs> such a loaded <laughs> question. Oh Lord, oh Lord, <laughs> just take your time and. I I have never wanted to bleach, even when I've gone to the dermatologist. Cause in the, I feel I could speak for the U.S. because, like I said, but even if you have like a blemish or you go through some type of treatment, which I've had, like I've had scars, mm -hmm. I always cringe when they say, "Oh, we're gonna give you," and I'm like, "Oh no, I don't want to use that." So on scars that were dark, I'm not gonna lie to you, I have used it, but mm -hmm. as like a whole body treatment, absolutely not. Mm -hmm. I don't even like the idea of it. Like I always cringe when they try to like recommend that, and my first resort is to what else can we try? first mm -hmm. but back when I didn't really understand it wasn't you it was meant it, I, in my eyes it was meant for if you have like a really dark blemish because you know with our skin type mm -hmm. when blemish it turns black so you just use it on the one spot but as for like a whole body right you know? so let me ask you though as a woman of color living where you live have you faced racism have you faced anything because of the tone of the shade of your skin and if you have how it could be viewed as good and bad. So, like, when I'm in New York, I guess when it comes to that shade, the skin color, I'm, I don't see, I don't even notice the difference. Like, I know I'm a, I'm a, I'm a black woman, mm -hmm. and that's, like, obviously, I can't hide that. Um, I do feel that times it's beneficial, and I do feel at times it could be a hindrance. When I come to Jamaica... I'm more actually, I'm more aware of my complexion because oh, yeah. I'm lighter than most of my family. Okay. When I'm in New York, I don't feel like I'm light skinned. Mm -hmm. When I come here, I don't, I don't consider myself light skinned, but when, like, but people here make me feel that way. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? It, it actually does. So, it actually does. And I never even think about my, when I come here, like, I have people who mention it and, I'm, and then when I look and I'll look and I'm like, oh wait, I am lighter. But I didn't even notice no. until someone else brought it to my yeah. attention. I get that. So it's definitely, too. it's definitely something that I, I, 
I wish could just go away. Mm -hmm. And that's also another reason why, like, I want to be the example for my family. It's like, hey, like, it's not about complexion. Like, be proud of who you are. I even had told cousins, like, if you're using certain brands of that particular breathing product, mm -hmm. you and I can't, like, you, I can help you, but we, we, how are we going to be on the same page if you're doing that to your body? Yeah, but... So, like on a final note, because I mean, we we're, we're gonna have a lot more conversations. Mm -hmm. Maybe not always on camera, but just I'd love you to just look into the camera and look at your Jamaican women, and any message that you can share with them about how they take care of themselves. Anything that you've seen that you go, you know, if I had a platform, I'd want to say this. I I would encourage and inspire them to really. Be, feel blessed of the resources and the things that they have available to them that's in Jamaica and how could they utilize those things that maybe their grandmother taught them about or another, their mom taught them about that works instead of finding looking for something made abroad. Like really focus on like what products you guys have here that you can use in your everyday regimen that can you know, enhance your natural beauty inside and out and don't necessarily feel like you have to have something that's made in New York. You have to have something that's made in Canada or England or anywhere abroad, but really look at what you have because it's, you have so many things here that I would like wish I could wake up to it every mm -hmm. day or w wish I had access to it every day even though I live in New York. So really cherish those things and you will see in the process you will feel more beautiful and you will look more beautiful if you cherish those things that you have here and all of those different ingredients that you can make a tea a cleanser or a moisturizer or even looking for tanya so yeah that is amazing because whenever i travel over the since the last three years when i travel i take my own soaps i take my lotion <laughs> i take the oils for my skin there was a time when you don't come I, back with it right? I, I don't come back no. with it because <laughs> most of the times i either sell it or end up giving it away to family you know um i just really have that 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 i just feel so blessed to be able to not just to go to seek 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 but to bring as well yeah. and jamaica would say it over and over we can't say it enough the turmeric in the soap was was made in jamaica with the products that we some things you know like essential oils they may have to be imported but we have so many amazing things that came from the soil in jamaica we are positioned in a way that geographically we have the one of the best soil types in the world so thank you for watching today kemoy it was so awesome to have you i can't hug you enough thank you you know and um and Tanya from Tanya's Body Care. Click, like, subscribe, share with a friend. Tell us what you've learned. And until next time, peace be unto you. <laughs> <laughs>